Welcome back to the mess. Feeling like taking a bit of a break from the outboard motor swap on the old Larson over there. So we're going to rip into these and see if we can get them running again. Picked these up earlier in the week off of Zuckerberg's rummage sale website there. Paid 40 bucks for the pair and while in 2023 $20, dollars that's like a buck a piece. So can't really pass that up running or not. They are both Husqvarna 435s. Looks like they both have 16 inch bars on them. And according to the ad, neither one has spark. Now at this point, you guys know about as much as I do about these. Didn't check them out whatsoever when I picked them up. Just hopped out of the car, handed the guy 220s, threw them in the back seat, and headed home. So let's test out that spark claim right away and see what might be going on there. You know, before we do much of anything, let's just grab each one of these and try and start them and see what happens. Go full choke. For a couple of primes. It feels like it doesn't really have much compression. And I think that's about enough of that to know that that one's probably not going to fire. Let's try the other one. I suppose we'll do the same thing with this one. Full choke. Primer twice. That one definitely has more compression than that one does. That one might need a piston and rings. And I think that was a fire. Yep. So unless this is the world's first diesel chainsaw, I'm going to say this one has spark. Let's just see if it'll actually run, I guess. So after that brief 30 second attempt at trying to start these, seems like this one might not have spork. We'll look into that in a little bit. That one definitely does, and it was almost idling. So, I guess path of least resistance. Let's rip into that one first, since it seems the most promising, and see if we can't get her going. Well, there's some good news, I guess. You know, if we get in over our heads, we can always try and give them a call. They might might be able to help us out. All right, that's enough screwing around. Let's open this thing up. Well, we know she obviously had spark. That was definitely a fire. But let's just check it out anyway. And uh, see what it looks like. Oh, well, <laughs> definitely got spark. I just shocked myself. There, hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah, so that one definitely has spark. No issues there. Kind of just seems like it's a carb problem. So I guess let's see if we can get the carb off. I'm not sure if this choke lever has to come off of here. Probably doesn't, but this carb's not coming off and I feel like I'm missing a screw. So I'm gonna see if taking this off and getting out of the way, getting it out of the way helps me uh, see something that I might be missing. There was a third screw. Still can't see it, but found it with the Allen wrench, so hopefully I'm in there tight enough. I'm not gonna round it out. But there, looks like she uh, broke loose. And this is where a ball end Allen would be nice, so I could actually get a full rotation on it. And then I think, I might be wrong, but I think the recoil's gotta come off to get the carburetor off. Or at least it looks like that's gonna be the easiest way to do it. Well, maybe not. Either way, we can take this out, clean it all up in there. It does give us a little bit more room. Yeah, I thought this, uh, thought this was going to be attached to that recoil cover, but I guess not. So, we'll just have to keep trying to finagle this out of here. Not sure what I'm missing, but she doesn't seem to want to go. Alright, camera quit on me there, but the thing that I was missing was having to depress the primer bulb all the way to get it up past. Um, this housing here. And then once I had that done, I was able to unhook the kill switch wires, black on the top, blue on the bottom, or green on the bottom, and then you can separate this little 
pin right here from the rubber vibration mount there and then it all just kind of lifts up and out. And then we should have just about everything there. There we go. Try and disconnect the fuel line there. All right, so here's a carburetor. I'll try and separate that out into its respective parts. You guys probably can't see it too well, but this says China on it right there. Now I'm wondering if that's an aftermarket part. I wouldn't think that Husqvarna's come from the factory with Chinese fuel pumps slash carburetors on them, but these days, I guess I don't know. But regardless, for now, I think I'm going to fire up the ultrasonic cleaner. We'll get all this tossed in there and get it all cleaned up. And while that's running, uh, I'm just going to clean up the body of the saw. And then once that's all done, we'll toss it back together, I guess. Now that the ultrasonic cleaner and the air compressor are done making noise, I can talk to you again. You know, I really don't mind cleaning these things, and I'm kind of surprised people let them get as bad as they do just because they're honestly like one of the easiest things in the world to clean up. Just because they are practically self-lubricating, every single one that I've ever had has just been, you know, they always leak oil all over themselves, it's just the nature of the saw. Um, but then all the sawdust and dirt and everything just clumps that oil, and all you really got to do is just take a an air compressor to them and just blow them off and they pretty much come out looking just how this one's looking right now. Um, all that time that I spent dicking around in here with a, a cloth and a screwdriver, um, you know, probably not super necessary, but I, I really think if you just go in there with an air hose, you can kind of get the same result. And I mean, that's the case over here on this side. You guys saw me going at this with that pick. Um, you know, once I was done getting the, the majority of the large stuff off, just took it over there and, and blew it off with the compressor and this is how it, how it came out looking. So. I'll still probably go back in here and go over this with a toothbrush uh, just to clean it up for the hell of it. Um, you know, stuff like this it really doesn't pay because it's just going to get dirty again the first time that you use it, but I don't know. I like to at least give it a good once over and get the bulk of everything off of it. Still got a little bit more work to do here on the front, so let's clean that up and then we'll pull everything out of the ultrasonic cleaner and see how that all turned out. All right, with that, let's call it good enough for now. Grab everything out of the ultrasonic cleaner, see how that all turned out. And then I think we'll just try and put the car back in here and, and maybe take a look at the bar. And I think 
while I have this apart this far, that other saw has a non-broken uh, chain brake handle on it. So since that one didn't appear to fire as easily as this one, we might as well just take that one off. We'll make this one the good one and then see what we can do with that other one later. Let's see if we can get this back together now. This is interesting. I don't think I've ever had a saw that's had like a split plane intake like this. That's, I don't know if that's got something to do with the whole X torque system or whatever it is that's advertised on the side of these, but I don't know. I think we got that back where it needs to go. Let's see if I can slip those kill switch wires on. There's one. Now can we successfully resituate everything? It would appear so. Well, I got that one started. It's in the hole. I'll catch up with you guys next year once I have it tight. Found a longer Allen wrench. That made it a little bit quicker. Okay, well that's back in. I'm gonna blow out this air cleaner. Doesn't look too bad actually, but I'll give it a little, little spray. Yeah, air cleaner is actually the cleanest part of the saw. You know what, before I put that back on there, let's put the choke slash kill switch back on. And if I remember correctly, this goes somewhere in this general area. Kind of like that. And those snap down into there. Nice and tidy. And then we can put our recoil back. That's on there nice and good. She looks pretty dang good. For a $20 chainsaw. Alright, I'm going to go for a walk out to the magical land of the yard barn and see if I can't find any two-stroke fuel that's mixed already. And then we'll gas this thing up and see if we can't get it to run and idle. Well, yard barn was frozen shut, so that didn't work out in our favor. But I was able to siphon a little bit out of a snowmobile. The Everest has mixed fuel in it, so we'll just use that. All right, well, let's see if she fires. Choke off. One, eight hundred, four, eight, seven. All right, well, all joking aside here, um, I don't think this is a fuel delivery issue. Obviously, we still have a problem, um, but I'm willing to bet that it's actually a problem with the coil. Even though we have spark, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good coil. So, I think I'm gonna pop that out, and we'll do a couple different things here. Uh, worst comes to worst, I'll just oil, or oil, uh, order a new coil um, and replace it. But I think before we do that, I want to pull the old one off. Um, I don't know if the spark plug boot is removable or not. It might be. It almost looks like it is. I'm probably just wrecking it here. Yep. <laughs> uh, but we'll grab the other saw and check for spark on that one too. And who knows, maybe that one's... Um, that one might have a good coil on it, might have a different problem, so before I order a new one, am I leaking gas all over the place here? Yep. Before I order a new one, we'll check that one at least and see if we got one of the two good, but who knows, that one might be bad as well, but either way, that's the direction we're going in right now. So uh, before I go ordering a new coil, like I said, let's just check this one out. See if it's any better. All right. 
Oh. Well, it looks like we had spark there too. Yep, I'm seeing spark. So I wonder if this one's got the same problem or if this one's actually a carb issue. This one does seem to be pissing gas all over the place, so I don't know. Don't know. All we can do is swap them out and see if it makes any difference, I guess. All right, we're all buttoned back up here. This is with the coil out of the other saw. Let's see what she does. Sounded a little bit more promising than the other one did. That was a lot of dicking around, but I think we kind of learned something from that. That old coil, definitely bad. This new coil, probably also bad. But I guess it could be a couple other things too. But I think I am just going to order a new coil for it. And then when that gets here, we'll try that one. But it's almost acting like the timing is off. I don't know 100% for sure, but I think a lot of the timing in these is actually built into the coil. I'll have to go do some digging on the internet and see if that's correct, but um, I know they have, they're supposed to have like a set timing for idle and for starting, and then that uh, should have like a built-in advance um, for higher RPMs. But the only other thing that I've seen here is this um, cylinder head has all this engraving on it. And I don't know if that, well, I guess cylinder head, jug, it's all one piece, whatever you want to call it get down there in the comments and yell at me for using the wrong terminology but um, yeah either way I don't know if somebody had replaced that at one point in time I don't know if they could have you know it depends on how far they went if they would have just I think if they would have just replaced you know this the cylinder here I don't really think they could have screwed up the actual timing but I think we'll start with coil and then just go from there that's, that's still the way that I'm leaning here. Obviously, it's running better with this different coil on here, but I mean, this one's probably just as old as the other one, so kind of hard to troubleshoot with potentially bad parts. And like I said, I suppose that all that backfiring could be a fueling issue yet, but I really, I'm just hung up on that for some reason. So I want to get a known good one, and even buying a new one is kind of dodgy because they all come from China at this point and were no doubt manufactured by small children. So all we can do is just order one, slap it in there and see what happens. And who knows, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe on the next trip into the house, I'll grab my meter. We can come back out here and uh, actually own these out and see if they check out as good or bad. I don't even know what the spec is off the top of my head. That's why I haven't done that yet. But for now, I think I'm just going to order at least one coil. And then in the meantime, I'm going to go back to working on the boat. So I will catch back up with you guys once I have that coil. Well, it is a day or two later now, and it looks like our parts have arrived fresh from West Taiwan. So let's go ahead and we'll get that installed and see if that fixes our problem for us. Well, it's in there. Not really a fan of the way that any of that fit back together, but let's try and start it up and see what happens. Full choke. It says to prime it six times, so I guess we'll go with that. And let's see what she does. Or is 
made a couple of carb adjustments. So definitely a couple of different issues going on there. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure if the coil was part of the problem. I want to say that it was, for sure, the original coil that was on there, but carb seems to have been way out of adjustment too. I'm not exactly sure what the specs are for the high and low adjustment and the idle on there, but just kind of going by feel and by ear there, I think we got it relatively close. Um, but before I mess with it, I mean, normally you adjust the high side um, with the bar in a log while you're cutting. So I at least want to get that clutch cover cleaned up and get the bar and chain put back on there and then just kind of see if it if it acts any different with a little bit of a load uh, on the engine instead of just freewheeling the clutch like that. So let me get that cleaned up real quick and then toss the bar and chain back on and then I'll bring you guys back in. Well, holy shit, what a nightmare this thing has been. Tell you what, after all the part swapping that I did with the other one now, I think we might, might have been better off trying to get that one to run first. But let me bring you up to speed on what I've been doing. It's been about three days since uh, that last clip of it semi sort of running here at the bench. So after replacing the coil and then messing with the carb a little bit there, we did get it to run and it was running for a while, but it was just coughing and sputtering and backfiring and it wouldn't stay running for like more than 30 seconds. So I had to shut the camera off and I had to focus a little bit and try and figure out what was going on. And I found a couple different things. So let me show you what they were. So number one, and this wasn't that big of a deal, I ended up having to replace this chunk of fuel line. Um, this is the one that goes into the gas tank and then has the pickup on the end of it, but it had a small hole in it. I don't think you guys are really gonna be able to see it, but it's right there at the tip of my finger. If I stretch it a little bit, you can see right there, there's, there's a hole in it, and it actually runs all the way through it. So for starters, it was sucking air through there. So then even with that fuel line replaced, uh, it was still only run for about 30 seconds and it was still backfiring and coughing and just running like shit. And I couldn't figure out why because I had pulled the flywheel off at that point and I checked to make sure that, well, these don't have, um, they don't have actual, don't have actual flywheel keys per se, but they've got a little one uh, molded into the flywheel itself. But this is the flywheel that was on there pulled it off and then just started comparing it to the one that was on the other saw. And I believe this one to be an aftermarket uh, flywheel, even though it's got the Husqvarna mark on it. I think there are a lot of aftermarket companies that make replacement parts for Husqvarna that just kind of go ahead and slap their logo on it. But the other one that was on the other saw actually had a made in Sweden marked on it. So I'm guessing that one was actually correct and an actual genuine Husqvarna part. So what I'm thinking is this is either not the correct flywheel or that generic coil that I got was not matched to this flywheel or is a better match to the flywheel that was on the other saw. Obviously somebody had been messing around with this before us. Um, I just really don't know to what extent. Um, so anyway, put that other flywheel on there. And then in the process ended up breaking off a couple of fins on it. And then reset the coil gap, uh, the air gap on there. It's like something like, I believe it's 12 thousandths of an inch. So set that and now it seems to be pretty happy. On the bottom end, it seems pretty happy anyway. The top end still seems like it's not quite reaching peak RPM. So um, I'm not gonna worry about that too much until I get it in the log and actually start cutting with it. Um, but for now, let's go outside, start it so you guys can see what it does. Oh, <laughs> 
that ended up being quite a bit more complicated than I had originally anticipated. Uh, at least back in the beginning when I first ripped on the cord of this thing, heard it fire, kind of just thought it was going to be a carb cleaning and it was going to be good to go, but obviously that was not the case. So just to recap everything that we did, pulled the carburetor off, cleaned that, uh, replaced that chunk of fuel line that goes into the tank, uh, put a new pickup on there, ended up originally swapping the coil that was on the other saw, and I should go back and check that one. That one might actually be good. Um, I never ohmed any of those coils out, but I believe the spec that I saw in the manual was 5 ohms. Um, I want to double check that though, but there is a service manual available online for these. Just Google Husqvarna 435 service manual. It's right there. Um, first link, but anyway, yep, still have the new Chinese aftermarket coil on here. Might be worth swapping that out to the uh, one off the other saw. Like I said, might work a little bit better. Um, and then after that, found out that the flywheel that was on there at least appears to not be a genuine Husqvarna part, even though it has the Husqvarna logo stamped on the back. Um, I was reading online that seems to be a pretty common thing for aftermarket parts. Um, even though they're not genuine Husqvarna made in Sweden parts, they'll still have the logo stamped on them. I'm not sure how they can get away with doing that, but seems to be the case. So if you're looking for genuine parts, make sure they maybe say made in Sweden or you order them directly from Husqvarna or something like that. But once we got that flywheel on there and then tuned the carb, it seems to be running pretty good. Like I said, the top end is still a little bit iffy. Uh, you could probably hear it out there. Sounds like sometimes it's peaking out to the RPM that it should and other times it's not quite getting there. Um, so again, that could be... Um, the timing circuit in that coil, it might not be um, built correctly, uh, or it could be carb tuning it. I'm just going to have to get this thing into a log and then try and tune it from there. But all in all, for the 20 bucks that I paid for this thing, and then I think I spent another 40 bucks on parts, so 60 bucks altogether. If this ends up cutting a, a cord of wood, you really can't beat that. So, Still need to sharpen the chain on this, and then like I said, I kind of want to go back, swap out this chain brake handle, and I'm sure there's probably a couple little... Um, odds and ends, things here or there that I might want to touch up on it. Um, I think I am going to try and find a, another uh, replacement flywheel, probably try and find a genuine Husqvarna one, because like I said, when I um, was taking that off the other side, I ended up breaking a couple of fins off of it. And then um, some of the, the recoil, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, if you want to call them sprags or whatever, um, these things right here, the stop uh, for one of these, um, the flywheel that's on there now is broke off, so this is kind of just flopping around in there. And the recoil is really only grabbing that one, so it's it's not the best. Um, not, not ideal for smooth operation. But anyway, since that ended up taking quite a bit longer than I thought it was going to, I think we're going to save the other one for a different video. Uh, but I am planning on trying to rip into that one and see if we can get it going without spending too much money on it as well. Uh, I'll probably end up throwing these up for sale. I think I have, well, with these... Two, I'll have eight chainsaws, and I mean, I'm all about redundancy, but at some point, redundancy becomes insanity, so I uh, don't think I need eight of them sitting around, so I'll probably end up throwing these up for sale, seeing if we can at least make our money back, but for now, hope you guys enjoyed. I want to thank you very much for watching. You know, I greatly appreciate it, and we'll see you soon. Have a good one.